Strings of amino acids and even some three-dimensional structure interactions create structures that we call domains. Originally, they were defined as functional domains, that is, regions of the polypeptide that perform an identifiable function. So for example, the active site of enzymes would be a domain. It's a region with a very specific structure intended for a very specific interaction. And active sites of enzymes are often formed by amino acids, not contiguous necessarily, but that fold over and find themselves in the same vicinity, but are not necessarily close to one another if you were to just look at the amino acid sequence. So that would be a functional domain of a polypeptide. So domains often carry out specific functions. It turns out that many different proteins with very different overall functions share conserved domains, which means that they share conserved common functions. So we can have a set of proteins, each of which accomplish something different overall, but in order to accomplish it, share a particular domain in common. I just want to show you an example of the domains of a protein. This is the cap protein, or cyclic AMP binding protein of bacteria. It regulates bacterial operons, and I'd like you to look that up in the text if you don't remember it. But this is the ribbon and helix drawing of such a molecule. And the important thing that I want to bring out here is that there is a region which binds a cyclic AMP. That's the cyclic AMP binding protein, after all, so it better have a region that does that. That's the domain on the top. There is a domain below which is structurally separate from the cyclic AMP binding domain. And that's the domain that binds DNA, because you may remember that the cat protein is a gene regulatory protein, which in order to function has to bind DNA in the vicinity of the genes that it regulates. So protein domains are structural units of proteins that often perform specific identifiable functions.